Thank you so very much for staying with us. My name is still Valentine or at Kalami Val, but of importance how to interact with us is at Y5 on Facebook, Y254 channel on X, and of course all those wonderful social media platforms, threads, YouTube, X. Did I miss something? There's so many, Instagram. And I think we're going to talk about that. We're going to brush on how social media kind of or the digital space affects our mental space. Guys, a long time ago, not long, a long time ago, it used to be called Youth and Politics, but we sat down, a very, very big and heavy team sat down and decided that we will now dub it Youth Affairs, where we just brush on things that touch on the youth. What is important to you? Do you have something to ask? Please do interact with us on our socials, and our hashtag of the day is Why in the Morning or MCM, Mondays where we crush on our gentlemen. Now, in studio with me, a very, very high intellectual so you will allow me to use all the English that I can possibly <laughs> can today. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? Fine, thank you. Welcome to studio. Oh, yeah. Well, thank I, you. I can see your arms to the teeth hmm? <laughs> with pros, but please do introduce yourself before we go on. This is Professor Dr. Nafta Lobuya. Mm -hmm. I'm a university lecturer. Okay. And my specialization is in counseling psychology. Mm -hmm. And that is who I am. All right, yes. Professor. Mm. Uh, okay, I can see you, you have um, writ. What, what is it? I know what it is, but for the viewer who is at home, <laughs> would you please explain to them what it is? Um, I've written so many books, and uh, the latest book that I've done is this one I'm holding in my hands, mm -hmm. called Slaying the Silent Killer. Okay. And this one is uh, zeroing in on matters depression mm -hmm. because it has become a real lethal killer mm -hmm. in families. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen cases where uh, mothers are killing their children. Mm -hmm. We have seen cases where husbands are murdering their wives. Mm -hmm. We have seen cases uh, where people are degenerating mentally and when they are diagnosed in hospitals, there is basically nothing to show but uh, the systems are shutting down just because of the pressures of life. And that is why I have uh, gone deep uh, to study counseling psychology mm -hmm. so that we can be able to mitigate. Like now, this book, we are talking about slaying. We are not zeroing so much on the causes because mm -hmm. causes are there. But now after causes, what next? Mm -hmm. We need to slay the killer. Mm -hmm. So we have, have, I have advanced in this book uh, so many mitigations uh, that can be used to address uh, this uh, elephant in the room called depression mm -hmm. yeah and i'm covering it at sev at all levels actually uh, from um, the depression affecting adults i've talked about depression affecting uh, uh, schools uh, colleges universities because some of our students because being a, a lecturer i have seen these affecting even our own students mm -hmm. uh, there are so many things that happen and sometimes we blame them um, for not uh, surfacing and arising on the occasion, and yet there are issues that are affecting them. So we have seen even others committing suicide mm -hmm. in our universities, colleges. Uh, we have seen cases where some uh, youths have even dived in uh, uh, water bodies, and they, they have committed suicide, you know. They have just drowned. And we have, these things are aff this thing is affecting uh, people at all levels. So what we are talking about here is a real problem mm -hmm. uh, that we need to and look at and see how we can help our people. All right. Yeah. Uh, before we get to the mitigation, mm -hmm. I, I want to paint a picture of what depression looks like because we assume depression is someone who's sad, who is uh, staying away from society, they're staying in the house the whole day, mm -hmm. they're not talking, they're introverts, quote unquote, because that's a little bit harsh yeah. of us to label them. But Someone who's depressed is the maybe the happiest person in the room. Mm -hmm. he, he or she is the life of the party. <laughs> he or she is the one who calls you up. Uko, <laughs> it's Friday. Yeah, so how do we detect subtle um, signs? What you are describing, uh, we can call that more of um, an escapist attitude mm -hmm. and behavior. As you say, very true, somebody can be depressed and they are putting up a face. But in reality, they are being eaten from within. Mm. So what they are doing is purely public relation to make people you know, think that they are okay. Mm. But when they, they, they get into their uh, you know, private quarters, private, uh, you know, inside, as we say, Nyuma Yahema, mm -hmm. they, they, they are crying and uh, they are breaking down 
but when they come to the public, they wipe their faces and look like they are okay. Mm -hmm. And now that is very dangerous. So when we are talking about depression, much of it is, uh, uh, it's, it, it is a mental illness mm -hmm. that sometimes detecting it may not be easy if it is still mild. Mm -hmm. But when it is at a higher level, now we are going to see glaring symptoms yeah, now like the ones we are talking about, the withdrawal syndromes and the hyperactivity sometimes or sometimes cases where somebody has a very severe mood swing mm. and this automatically affects the operation, be it at the place of work, be it in the family, mm -hmm. it affects even family members and if it is let to go loose, mm -hmm. we have sometimes found cases where people have been admitted in hospital mm -hmm. yeah, because it can go so far until it calls for admission and if not quickly um, seen by people who are closer to this person, somebody can even die. Mm. We have heard of people uh, dying sometimes in the night. In this book, I've indicated something here that looks that, uh, you know, I have observed that uh, when we look at some of uh, the people who die at their places of work, wow. they, we are told they came from home when they're okay. Mm -hmm. He drove to his place of work. He entered the office. And when he was settling in his seat, he just collapsed, and that was the end of him. Mm. So he was carrying something that people did not detect. Something was eating him up. And you see, depression can um, you know, give birth or lead to some cases of uh, uh, you know, high blood pressure because you know, someone is packed, and he didn't get a place to ventilate. So mm. when he came to the place of work, and I was saying, like, most of the deaths at our place of work, they occur on a Monday morning. Wow. <laughs> because I have so many, uh, uh, you know, cases in point, Monday morning, because uh, they have just come to a place that probably uh, squeezes their imagination. They have come from home, they were happy, but when they arrived at, uh, at their place of work, they realized I've just come to the place that causes me mental distress and pressure shoots up and this person collapses and people did not know that he had been harboring this for some time. Mm -hmm. So depression is about um, uh, you know, a mood swing that can occur either instantly or it can occur over a period of time and it grows from mild even to advanced cases of uh, uh, breaking down. Wow. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, okay. I want to phrase this very carefully because I am <laughs> af also African. Is but okay? Africans mm. were very set in our ways. Yes. And we think there are some things that we have borrowed from the West. Yes. So perhaps five, ten years ago, mm. if we had tried to explain that depression is an actual thing mm. and it doesn't choose what race or, you know, I want to say tribe or culture you're yeah, from, yeah, it does not yeah. choose. It just depression is depression. Sure. How would you explain to an African that it's okay to go to therapy and it's not as expensive as you think? Um, you know, I'm also an African. Mm -hmm. I'm born in African circles. I'm born here in Kenya, in Africa. And, uh, you know, um, it's, let me talk as an African man mm -hmm. before I address matters general. You know, like, um, we in Africa, we have been cultured in a way where vijana na mbwanga kijana we usilielie mbele ya watu eh wewe ni mwanaume eh kwa hivyo usionyeshe kana kwamba you are you are weak mm. but you see when it comes to matters affecting our mental health we need to be candid and we need to be open we need to be uh, free to share out what we are going through because if we suppress it Suppression is not the solution. Mm -hmm. Suppressing only you know, helps to pump and to accumulate more pressure. And this has been on, you know, it, it's something that has happened in the past. And so that, that's why people have died without others knowing. Mm. There was no ventilation through therapy, you mm. see. Alifinyilia, sasa unakaki una Afrika. Ya yeah, sisi hatulialiangi mbele ya watu, especially us now, the, the boys, you mm. know, the, when we people were 
wa, 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 wa growing <laughs> you know we were told wewe ni mwanaume wewe ni kijana vijana hawalili mbele ya watu mm. kumbe that was not the way to go mm -hmm. and uh, you know you you get a, a young person he's looking for uh, a place to ventilate he's looking for uh, somebody to talk to but he has been told usilielie mm. so he and, uh, you know he ends up uh, you know uh, closing up himself and slowly by slowly he is being eaten up that's why we have we are having cases of uh, young people hanging themselves mm. yeah you know like uh, being in the field of education i have handled many cases mm -hmm. parents have come with uh, cases of uh, their young uh, boys even girls amejifungia kwa nyumba hatoki this 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 is a student in the university or in high school or amemaliza chuo amemaliza from four amejifungia lakini kwa vile aliambiwa don't let people know what you're going through mm -hmm. unajipa, una, wanapata huyo kijana alijihang mm -hmm. i handled such uh, cases a number of them which led me to actually writing doing this research mm -hmm. actually this is a research project part mm -hmm. of my my research work and uh, part of my thesis work and i got in because of those kind of cases that uh, as it were then sometimes back Mm -hmm. We didn't allow our young people to express what they are feeling. Let's say 10 years ago, uh, uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Now me, let me go to our, me. I'm um, in the 30 years ago when I was still a youth. Now we are saying that is not the way to go. To watch a vijana wafungue roho. Mm -hmm. Yes, wapate mahali pa kuji express. Mm -hmm. Wapate people whom they can believe they can have confidence in and uh, when they come now like us who are specialists mm -hmm. uh, in that uh, field of uh, counseling and in psychology we should be available to these young people mm -hmm. uh, to express themselves to see mambo ya kitambo tuachane nayo sio kama mambo ya kitambo ni mabaya sana lakini kuna mengine ambayo sio mazuri like telling young people to keep quiet to express themselves wewe ni mwanaume watu watakuona aje if you are a, a young man as i was then some 20 years ago wasichana watakuona aje wewe unalialia aje mbele ya watu wewe utapata mke namna gani you need to be you know a macho man but kumbe unakuliwa ndani unapata mtu amejihang mm -hmm. wengine wamejirusha ndani ya ya, ya, ya maji mm -hmm. we have had cases where uh, people mtu anasimama mbele ya, ya, ya gari anagongwa tu mm -hmm. kwa sababu this person is depressed and he didn't have ventilation so the things of the past let us get out of there now let us open up space for people to express themselves so that we can be able to help them out mm -hmm. yeah uh, this is something we have just touched on not really discussed before mm -hmm. we went on air so let me bring the viewer up to speed yes. with a story so mm -hmm. i was watching a conversation with the um, mm -hmm. former first lady of the united states that's michelle obama yes. and she was on a particular podcast and yes. she put it in a very interesting way that yeah. uh <laughs> Naweza sema hizo enzi za kitambo tu kidogo si zangu so i don't really understand yes. but uh, there was a particular time in history where there was there wasn't much exposure like you said there wasn't yes. social media mm. Mm -hmm. so any news i got to hear was of my village mm. and maybe the neighboring villages or towns or cities and etc etc yes. but now we have the whole world really at the palm of my hand and we're living in a generation where we're tethered to our phones i wake up the first thing i do is Right. Uh, and and it's it, it might even be that the world is even safer now mm -hmm. what with security and all these things mm -hmm. but the the sheer volume of information i know what's going on in gaza yes. i know what's going on in sudan yes. i know what's going on in namibia condolences like there's just so much going on mm -hmm. and then there's also i want to say peer pressure of a special kind from mm -hmm. social media mtume piga picha hapo look who nice smart mm -hmm. You feel like, oh my gosh, I went to school with this person. Mi mbona sijafika hapo. Ona ame aliolewa. Ona kuna gari. Ona kuna watoto. Nini, nini, nini. Fanya rusi. Ah, kubwa tena sana. Na mi tu, ndio kushinda kuoga tu, nikienda soko. What's all this? As in, is it partly that pressure, that over exposure, just for lack of a better term? Exactly, I hear you. You know, um, I want to agree with you, and uh, we are dealing with matters of diversity. 
and uh, you know uh, people are refusing to be themselves mm. yes and uh, you know because of uh, too much exposure mm -hmm. uh, to the social media as you say people wake up not just the youth alone mm -hmm. even us at our age you know we are not very old though uh, but mm -hmm. at our age now just entering our 50s mm -hmm. we still have uh, in my cohort people who do the same thing mm -hmm. waking up in the morning the first thing that they are touching is their phone and they are going to facebook they are going to twitter they are going to whatsapp they are going to all the platforms and as you say there they are going to meet some of these people whom they think uh they are like them let's say someone like me mm -hmm. um are people that i went to school with let's mm -hmm. say in primary school uh in the 80s mm -hmm. and uh you know in secondary as we used we went up to a level you know in the last a level groups that's where i belong mm -hmm. 88 89 so i have friends that i was with in that cohort and let's say i got i went to the university my first degree in the early 90s i have cohort members there so when you go to the social media and you find your cohort member is 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 posting a photo there and he's driving let's say a v8 and you don't even have a bicycle mm. yeah you start imagining that probably uh, something is wrong with you mm. and uh, either you are you are cast or mm. like uh, it's the world is just not fair to you and uh, you become depressed mm -hmm. you become stressed up you become you know you start closing up or now you don't understand the dynamics of uh, management of finances and abilities of resources and and then you want to use let's say your uh, uh, minimal resources to try and achieve a similar lifestyle mm -hmm. because each lifestyle comes with the uh, you know demands because mm -hmm. like if i'm driving a v8 mm -hmm. a v8 you know is a big engine mm -hmm. talking about a 4.5 liter engine mm. and uh, it is consumption of uh, fuel is very high if i was driving let's say from nairobi to western mm -hmm. busia where i'm born mm -hmm. a v8 you know i'm going to fuel this car with the almost one way uh 18000 or 20000 and there was a time it was 10000 now yeah, it's 18 now it is 18000 wow coming back i'll i will fuel it again another 18000 mm -hmm. that is almost 40000 mm -hmm. so if you are and now you you are driving um let's say a vis which 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 is which is a, a 1.3 liter you see going the same journey you will use 6000 and back 6000 mm -hmm. so this is 12000 now your cohort member is driving a v8 now you go take a loan yes and go and buy a v8 mm -hmm. because you want to fit in your in your in your in your, in your cohort mm -hmm. not knowing that one journey to western with a v8 mm -hmm. is your whole month's salary or you'll have to take a loan <laughs> to fuel that car and when you are not able now to manage that lifestyle you see you're going to be depressed mm. and that's the same thing even to the young people yeah you know let's say you are you are with your classmates you see at the university you know you know like i know i'm a college lecturer and i know what i'm talking about mm -hmm. that most of our young people in the university you know they are graduating at the age of 20 to and let's say 21 22 the first degree or 23 24 yeah there and if they, they think that uh, uh, as soon as you get out of university mm -hmm. you must get a job mm -hmm. and then once you have a job you are going to buy a car mm -hmm. you see and uh, you know you are going just to get into this flamboyant life uh, which is not always the case mm -hmm. then they see their friends at, at 27 akona gari akona nyumba hata mwingine labda amefanya harusi mzuri tena kubwa they know nowadays the way the social media I'm a post pale you know a rusi ya kukata mm -hmm. na shoka na na ongea vile ametumia 1.5 million mm -hmm. kufanya hii harusi na sasa you know this other person anaangalia na natamani that kind of a lifestyle and sometimes they are tempted to do things beyond their means and when now the matrix does not add up 
straight away is depression. So what you are saying is very true. Mm -hmm. And we are saying that uh, by the grace of God, mm -hmm. can we live within our means? Mm -hmm. And also, can we accept that life is uh, uh, in steps? You, you don't jump one step. Mm -hmm. And when you, you see your friend, for instance, driving a nice car that's worth two million or 2.5 million or let's say uh, a million and above, you also need to ask yourself a question. How did he get that car? There could be other means that he used to get that car that are not necessarily a salary. Mm. He could be your workmate, for instance, mm -hmm. probably. And even you earn a similar salary, mm -hmm. And you wonder, my, my, this salary cannot afford me a 2.1 million car. Mm -hmm. How comes my friend is driving a 2.1 million car? And you may not know that this person has some other side mm. uh, you know, effects that he's doing, mm -hmm. uh, and he has not told you. You think it is salary. So you go ahead and take a loan. Then at the end of the day, you are at the, uh, the third rule. I'm sure you understand mm. it. You are, you are, you are, your pay is now... 18,000. Mm -hmm. So with 18,000, my friend, how will you fuel the car? How will you pay rent? How will you af afford your daily life? How if you're paying fees, let's say, for your siblings? So now you end up in debts, ni em kesho, ni em jana, ni em juzi, ni fuliza, ni nini. All these things together. Oh, my Jesus. Uh -huh. They just distress you and you realize that I have hit my wall mm. and therefore I need rescue. Mm -hmm. I need rescue because now I cannot be able to run with my life. Mm -hmm. So those are the things we are talking about and we are asking not just the youth alone, by the grace of God, mm -hmm. ca can we live within our means? Can we cut our coat as we say according to our size? Yes. Let's not go for oversize. You look funny out there. And some people, when they realize Kwamba Sasa Kimeumana, as now today the common language, Kimewaramba. Maisha mm Kimewaramba, -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. it is their own miscalculations. Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing they think about is Nijitie mm. Kitanzi, you know, mm. uh, commit suicide. That is not the way to go. Mm -hmm. Even if it has reached that point, we are available as specialists. Okay. Yeah, we are able to talk it out. We are, we are engaged in talking therapies, and we see how we can balance mm -hmm. uh, some arithmetics. Professor, I want to talk about, now before we get down to the mitigation, because that's why he's here. He's mm -hmm. actually written mm -hmm. a whole mm -hmm. book mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. But I w I'd like to imagine, and I don't want to put it on a specific yes. generation, or mm -hmm. it comes say mm -hmm. Gen Z, or say millennial, or boomers, or them. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see Gen Alpha, though. They, they look like they're going to eh, terrorize us a little bit. Then they know their rights already. <laughs> yes. So I don't want to blame a specific generation, but there is a trend yes. that you find two people maybe have, have entered an intimate relationship yes. at a very, I want to say, naive phase in their life. Yes, so I but hear you. Life in Akaje, but you've already decided to live together. Yes. And then it's, it seems the outbursts of anger are so raw. And right. I don't want to just, again, blame it on a gender and mm. say men versus women. Because yeah. I've also seen on social media how, oh, Sujui, a, a woman scorned, went and packed his whole house. Yeah. Now listen, man, Bahati too, I don't know how to remove that bed. Otherwise, <laughs> ata yon ingenda na yon. And then that in a bulb. Mm. You know, like, why are people so angry? Is it that we don't have the right skills? Are we not equipped to deal with relationships now? Or what was the difference? Like, how, how are people do... I hear Again, you. a certain mm. generation, you I know, you. to scare people have been married for 30 plus years. Yes. And, and nowadays, doesn't last even three years, the child is 30. Mm, yeah? and, mm, and then mm. if it's getting worse, if I may say, mm. that you're even getting into it before maybe you finish school, yeah, or you, you choose not to go to school so that yes. you can start a family or something. So is, is that mental health related? Is, is there something we don't know? Um, you know, I happen to deal with young people. Actually, that's where I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I deal with young people in colleges and universities, and also in the church. Mm -hmm. Because I'm also a preacher, I'm also uh, a pastor mm -hmm. uh, of a congregation called King Jesus Faith Ministries uh, on the superhighway here in Nairobi. 
and uh, we, 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 we also have, uh, you know, it is a large ministry with thousands and tens of thousands of young people. And these are some of the issues that we are, we are, we are every day dealing with, yeah? Because matters relationship as they are, these are heavy duty matters. Mm -hmm. And um, my advice is that uh, mm -hmm. don't get in it until when you are ready for it. Mm -hmm. Because it comes with a lot of uh, expectations. And as we say, there is no freedom without responsibility. Mm -hmm. Because you want to exercise a certain level of freedom and yet you are not ready and willing to take responsibility for that freedom. Sorry to interrupt. We were having a very heated debate actually with this, this team here, this camera crew team. Yes. And, and it, it felt like what the conversation is on the street is mm -hmm. being ready ni kuwa na pesa. Jus mustana hapendi mwanaume hana pesa. Yes. So mwanaume lazima aji... Mwanaume ni pesa. Ajitaftie pesa and then gets into the relationship. Is that the narrative? Is that what being responsible is? Not really. You know, money, in as much as we say, answers all questions. Mm -hmm. But also, money in an unprepared vessel can be like a bomb. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you put money in, a, in, in hands that are not responsible, that are not prepared, that money will turn against that person. So preparation, in a, as much as we need money, of course, w money will help you to sort one or two issues. But there is also that uh, element of uh, maturity mm -hmm. that brings out now the force of responsibility. Like now, um, let me talk about, even in the university where we are, you find uh, girls getting into marriage, let's say at the age, you know, their first years, mm. for instance. And they have just gotten this young man that, uh, you know, makes them feel like, you know, uh, you know, and I'm a part of my issues. I joined me talk a high school, the corner in the Finidio Kule, and I'm a talk a high school. You know, dad and mom are coming in Finidia. Now they come to campus, uh, then they realize, wow, Akima Pesa, Mambo, and Yohio, Vijan, and your love one Ajipata into the family way when they are not prepared for it. Mm -hmm. You see, I cannot advance that theory. So there is that dimension of preparation and also uh, mental maturity that comes with it that will make you responsible when you now have the resources. And also, you know, you, uh, some ages are still too, um, so to call, formative, even to make informed decision mm -hmm. about marriage. Because marriage has to do with whom am I moving in with. Mm -hmm. You can't just move in with anybody, and not everybody's wired for you. Mm -hmm. That's why in, in, in psychology, we teach about personalities, and we are now even, ca you know, cascading even to the church level mm -hmm. to teach people uh, the topics to do with personality, mm -hmm. so that you understand that there are personalities uh, that um, behave and exhibit certain uh, behavior. Mm -hmm. And if you are not ready to cope with such, then you just uh, keep off so that you look for this personality that you can be able to cope with. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that you don't enter into marriage with the wrong person. You may have all the money, mm -hmm. but you are in it with the wrong person. A person who is not, you know, the personality that you can cope with. With all the millions, kita umana bado, kutalipuka. Because we are dealing with the divorce, we are dealing with separations, we are dealing with violence in family, mm. as you say, people wedded. And this thing is becoming very common, especially among the young people. Let me, I'm 27 years in marriage. Mm -hmm. As I was wow. coming, I, I, I Someone's just... Someone's whole span of lifetime. Yes, 27 years, which is even beyond your age, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped my spouse at her place of work. Mm -hmm. I would have reached here early. Are you seeing that? Mm. But there is no way I would have... Uh, come here and left my spouse to get into a matatu mm. to go to her place of work. Mm -hmm. I've had to drop her at the gate mm. of her place of work. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then uh, push through the jam to reach KBC. Mm -hmm. And that's why I've come 
uh, about five minutes to the beginning of the program. Mm -hmm. Others I would have been here at uh, seven thirty. Mm -hmm. But you see, family comes first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, there's still baby girl treatment. I'm telling you. So uh -huh. I need to take care of this girl. Uh -huh. And if you see her, she looks very young because I take care of her. Uh -huh. 27 years, she's still smiling. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's still laughing and we are still in love. Wow. But I'm wondering what happens to young people at one year, two years, and uh, the passion has dried. Oh, it's like we need to investigate this thing. But as I'm saying, sometimes it has to do with the... Uh, you know, coupling up with somebody that you don't have certain uh, salient, uh, you know, uh, personas that can be able to cope together. And also there's this um, impatience, mm -hmm. is, you know, among this generation that, um, for instance, as you say, mm -hmm. uh, young girls, they look at marriage at as, 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 as a, a source of, uh, you know, solution to all their problems mm -hmm. so they are looking, like a life goal yes you know like uh, i get a man who has money and you know he will take care of me taking care of you is okay but you also need to know one thing that is very crucial uh, that uh, before money comes there is preparation for money to come mm -hmm. if you find somebody who has money would you listen to your person because you'll find that money comes but through some processes and so you have to be patient even if you are a couple for instance be patient to begin small okay begin at an entry point that is manageable within your resources and then grow like that before you have those v8s you have those uh, you know, mansionettes and you can go for those outings in Mombasa and you can take them to Seychelles. You need to develop your pool and it takes time. Mm -hmm. So young people, kindly, by the grace of God, allow yourselves to grow through the path of life. Yeah, you don't have to live all your life within one year. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to, life is a marathon. Mm -hmm. It is not a, a sprint. sprint. It's not. Mm -hmm. If you sprint, you will burn out within one or two years. But if you look at it as a marathon, you go slowly by slowly as you pick up, as you move, eventually you will achieve your objective. So what is happening here, much of it is uh, not giving your, uh, you know, ourselves, let's say, or the young people themselves time to grow. And we nurture each other. I like the way I've, we have nurtured each other with my spouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 27 years. Mm -hmm. She didn't get me driving. Mm -hmm. I wasn't driving. Mm -hmm. I wasn't having so much money. If, if I told her how much money I was earning, <laughs> then you would be shocked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but let's, that is a talk <laughs> for another day. And she uh -huh. accepted to come into my life like that. Mm -hmm. And we began to develop each other. So where we are today, 27 years later, mm -hmm. is not where we were. 27 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we began from somewhere and we agreed to nurture each other patiently. I grow her, she grows me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we start seeing resources coming. Mm -hmm. So I think that is an elephant in the room, especially uh, among the young generation. Not all. I don't want to say that it's all of them. Mm. No. We still have those who have those tenets and those values mm -hmm. of patience, tolerance and they can be able to, you know, adjust and allow life to uh, take it is one, two, three, four steps as they grow together. And mm -hmm. it is actually, to me, I find it um, uh, more joyous when I see the car that I'm driving, my money is in it, my wife's money is in it. Mm -hmm. So it is not my car, mm -hmm. it is our car. Mm -hmm. Yes, the house that we are living in, her money is in it. My money is in it. Mm -hmm. So it is not my house. It mm -hmm. is our house. Are mm -hmm. you seeing that? Mm -hmm. So I can't just wake up and say, get out of this house. Mm -hmm. Never. Mm -hmm. She will tell me, I am going away with my roof. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> this wall is mine. <laughs> yeah, I'm going away with this door. Mm -hmm. I'll go away with this <laughs> part of the wall. You know, of course, you know what happened. Mm -hmm. So if someone happens, it's like it, 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 it checks and balances. Mm -hmm. But now tell me, um, it's not that it's always like that. But you want, as a young girl, to get into somebody's house. Are you seeing that? Mm. You don't have a stake in it. You get there, the house is complete. They are, they, 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 the furniture is there. Uh, you know, 
the, 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 the utensils are done and the electronics are done and the house is nice. I said, wow, let me fika. Where we? How would you fika? Let me tell you the, for, for, for free. You will one day be asked to get out the way you came empty handed and it will not be good for you. So you would rather, uh, you know, get into, uh, you know, a matrix where we, we, we grow each other. And therefore you have this, what we call a sense of possession of that family. So that nobody will just tell you, get out, out of my car. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. Your car. My friend, mm -hmm. how does that become your car? It is our car. Are you seeing that? So those are the, 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 the dynamics that we need to look at so that we can solidify our relationships. Uh, I, there's someone behind the camera who wants to come in front and give his piece, but don't <laughs> worry. We will have our <laughs> forum after this. Don't panic. Don't panic. <laughs> yes, I might also have to convene mm. the baby girls. We talk about this new piece of information that has been revealed. Yes. Right now, on an individual level, yes. as part of the mitigation process, mm. uh, what I'm hearing is we should always extend ourselves grace. Yes. I, they say failing to plan is planning to fail. Exactly. But also, you plan and God loves. Exactly. Yeah, so there there's must be a, a point where, yes, you know where you're going and, and you're taking steps to get in there and you're walking in faith mm -hmm. and hope, but you're also extending yourself grace. So if you had purposed to be in a particular job for 12 years, yes. but on the seventh year, you know, maybe it didn't really work out and mm -hmm. you had to look elsewhere, mm. it might not even actually be a bad thing, yeah, you right. know? Mm. Because everything that happens <laughs> works for your good. Is that right? Hey. So we should extend ourselves, Grace, because I feel also peer pressure in a tokapo. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm expecting so much from myself that if I'm not delivering at the timeline I have given myself, mm -hmm. that I can easily sink into depression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we are not saying that um, uh, you should be static. Mm -hmm. It is good to dream and to dream big, um, it's good. Mm -hmm. It's good to dream big. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have so many scholars who have uh, come up with good pieces on dreaming big. And uh, what we are simply saying is that uh, it is good to be optimistic mm -hmm. and it is good to be a go-getter. There's no problem with that. It is good to try and better your portion. There is nothing wrong with that. And uh, in the world of career, uh, we talk about going for greener pastures. Mm -hmm. There is nothing wrong with that because um, at the end of the day, it is the will of God that we grow. Mm -hmm. Yes, even me, when I began working, I, 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 I began working as a high school teacher. Mm -hmm. And I went, I took my postgraduate studies and I went to teach in uh, teacher training colleges. And I continued studying and I metamorphosed to the university after getting my PhD. And, 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 uh, and, and so I kept on changing places, you know, changing places. And that is about uh, improving your lot and just uh, working out a formula to have something that can sustain you, uh, you know, better. You know, there is nothing wrong with that. And we encourage young people actually to be proactive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you see, like, uh, changing of career, for instance, uh, has to do also with preparation. Mm -hmm. Because higher level careers also come with uh, higher qualifications, for instance. Mm -hmm. Higher qualifications. So, like, uh, if, let me just use our, the case of uh, education. Uh, you are in a job where you, you, you entered as a certificate holder. Okay, and uh, you see, job groups also will go with qualifications. You see, it's just like that. So, if you want to improve your lot, especially in that career, if the same career still, but go higher, besides your good performance, you know, your 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 output is excellent. Do you know, somebody will come in your workplace mm -hmm. with the higher qualifications and has just come, and within a year, or even less, he becomes your boss, you'll become depressed. Wow. And this person probably, uh, he also had similar qualifications as your certificate, and he just went ahead, Akasoma online, 
or I can enroll with a training institution, a Kapata diploma, or a Kapata bachelor's. Now he has come. There is no way a certificate holder will supervise a bachelor's. It's not possible. So this person will just come and become your supervisor, and you, you become distressed for nothing. And yet you had even opportunity to better your career. There were chances for you to improve in, in training so that you can also have, get a higher uh, qualification. And, and, and when you do that, you know, your, 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 your pasture will continue becoming greener and greener and greener. That is why you can find a situation where a uh, uh, mwanafunzi ameinuka, mm -hmm. amekuwa mwalimu wa mwalimu wake. Wow. Sasa <laughs> mwalimu wake yeye alikama mm -hmm. hali pamoja. Mm -hmm. Na mwanafunzi akatoka nyuma and aka improve mm -hmm. uh, his qualification or her qualifications and when she came back she became the supervisor of the teacher. Wow. And now the teacher becomes distressed, some even want to quit job, mm -hmm. but they had opportunity to better their qualifications. So um I really encourage young people that if that opportunity comes, please take it up. Mm -hmm. Because today employers are going to look at your papers. You know, we can't run away from that reality. That's a fact. If it's an employer, atangalianini, papers. And uh, papers are just good. Papers are certificates. So the higher, the, 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 the better, and, uh, and uh, the more strong you improve on your uh, qualifications, the better. Mm -hmm. And that will make you to go to a greener pasture. But trying to change and go to a greener pasture and hauna, hauna what it takes mm -hmm. to get in that greener pasture can be frustrating. Mm -hmm. And you can also become depressed and yet you had an opportunity to do that. Okay. Sure. I, I do, I am a firm believer of education, yes. Mm -hmm. I also feel that this this day and age will also ask you for, you're 20 years old, but they want 30 years of experience. Yeah. So also experience is, is, is key. Yeah, right. Just just do something. Go out there. Put yourself yes. out there. Guys, kindly eh, mm. experience. Mm. Very true. Sana, sana, sana. Yes. All right. So the mitigation methods we've talked about so far is talking to someone. You said ventilation. Yes. <laughs> very important. It's very important to talk, mm. to speak to someone. Probably ventilation could appear like, you know, mm. a big term. No. To vent is just to create space mm. to express yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That you don't usikai oka jinyamazia na maneno na yana kufinyilia. So when you get the right person to talk to and uh, express yourself, that is what we call ventilating. Mm -hmm. Letting the pressure out. And we normally say ya kwamba uh, a problem shared, shared is a problem, is a problem 50% mm -hmm. solved. I, I'm a firm believer in that. Mm -hmm. Because after you talk, you know, you start feeling some relief. Even if I don't give you the real solution that you expected, but just that we talked and somebody showed you concern, somebody showed you love, mm. somebody showed that he cares, it is already 50% done. So this other 50% to mm -hmm. that is what we call ventilation. Mm -hmm. It is called the talking therapy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So there's, there's talking. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, is, are things like exercise, things that don't really involve medication or mm -hmm. things like, is, is exercise something that I can commit to doing and feel better about myself? Exactly. Like in this book here, um, the topic, I think it is, it is, it is topic nine, um, where I'm talking about uh, uh, depression in schools, colleges, and universities. It mm -hmm. is chapter eight. Mm -hmm. And one of the mitigations I've advanced here, which is true, mm -hmm. and some of my colleagues, I'm sure they could even be watching now, and they are in the uh, dimension of physical education mm -hmm. and science. One of the mitigations that we advance in dealing matters, depression and stress, is physical exercise. Mm -hmm. Yes. I know um, when you just sit there, the body is inactive. Even the thinking also is uh, deactivated kidogo. You know, when you just go out and you engage in physical exercise and you're running, it also opens up mm -hmm. your mind and uh, you feel relaxed. So I agree with you because 
even if we went to uh, the mental health doctors, mm -hmm. me, I, I'm, 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 I am a specialist in counseling psychology. That's where my PhD is. But we have uh, people who are just in the medical field, and mm -hmm. their specialization is mental health. They will advance that mitigation. Mm -hmm. And I agree with them that physical exercises are the key uh, to reducing stress levels and depression. Yeah, so I agree with you fully. Mm -hmm. mm, that's why when you come like in uh, high schools, where I, 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 I worked some years back, mm -hmm. even colleges, we have uh, uh, you know, that program uh, that young people need to go out and exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go out there and exercise and jump up and do what and laugh and create humor, all oh, that kind of, you know, it helps you to begin to open up and to begin to see things positively. Mm -hmm. So physical exercise, key. Very, very so, key. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you're wondering what we're talking about, we are taking apart our professor's book. It's called Slaying the Silent Killer, Slaying the Silent Killer, where the silent killer just happens to be depression. Yeah. All right, so we've got an exercise, we've got in talking. Uh, what else do we have? Maybe um, two more before we wrap this up. We have many other mitigations, like uh, when it reaches a point, <coughs> excuse me, where um, it has become intensive, then we recommend that uh, you see a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you came to us and we assessed you, we, 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 we can be able to determine uh, whether you need to see a medical doctor or, or not. But in advanced cases of depression, mm -hmm. we automatically advise that you seek the counsel mm -hmm. of a medical, a mental health doctor. Mm -hmm. They will be able to prescribe medication. We have drugs that can help to relax your brain mm -hmm. and you know sometimes people get depressed to the level where they even become violent mm. you know that they can just become violent wow yeah we assume depression brings yes. you low it mm -hmm. can also help make you explode it can people th there's um sorry to say this but some one year ago i was watching a news uh, item on one of our uh, tv stations mm -hmm. and they were showing somebody of age, this person must have been in his either mid-50s, right in the city here, mm -hmm. that he came to the office in the morning and he just took off running practically. And he went on the streets, one of these streets, I, I don't want to, 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 to pin the place because mm -hmm. I don't want to people to know who he is. Mm -hmm. And he removed his coat, he removed his shirt, he's a man. And he remained with his vest. He was almost removing his trouser. And he was doing weird things because he was talking to himself. He was yelling. Mm -hmm. He was screaming. Uh, people coming to, uh, to cool him down. He became violent. And that was an obvious case of depression. Wow. And he left home when he was okay, according to the people at home, mm -hmm. you see. And he reaches the office and he just exploded. Mm -hmm. You see? So such a case, what else do we recommend? We cannot recommend straight away the talking therapy. Mm. That one immediately, he needs to go for medication. He mm -hmm. has to go and see a mental uh, health doctor mm -hmm. so that they can prescribe some uh, medicines that can cool him before now he comes to us mm -hmm. now for the talking therapy. Yes. Mm. So that is another mitigation. Okay. Another mitigation is socialization. Okay. Yeah. Have a people that you can you can socialize with. Mm -hmm. Get out there with people. Uh, you know, talk mm -hmm. and uh, create humor. Mm -hmm. Laugh. Mm -hmm. You know, the people who are too serious for life. And some guys here, like in this studio, more than more serious, even. Ah, I can't give smile. you all the time. Trust yeah. me, I can't give you. <laughs> you yeah. need to to laugh out, mm. create humor. Sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. it helps. Just create humor and and be happy with with each other. Muna mm. uh, a high five mm. as you are leaving the studio. Mm. You know, as you leave your place of work, as you get home. Sometimes me, I get home and I I, I play with my my now 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 they are big boys. But when they were still young, you know. 
we, we would do a lot of dances with them. Mm -hmm. I said, Daddy, you know, we, we just dance. You know what, what I'm doing? I am killing stress. Mm. <laughs> mm. I've just come from a, you know, Kazi mm. Mekua mob. So I come home and we dance, we create humor, and we do everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Thank mm. you, Professor. Now, sure, it's sure, sure. unfortunately, our time is running out. We can literally talk about mental health all day with you. It's sure, I sure, think sure, I'm sure. finding my niche, guys. All right. So again, this is Slaying the Silent Killer. Maybe you could just um, raise it up for so they can see the cover. How yes. can they find it or how can they purchase it? Yeah, The Silent Killer is uh, in most of our bookshops. Okay. But uh, if because it, it, it was just launched this, uh, this month. Mm -hmm and uh, many bookshops have not procured mm -hmm. uh, their, their, their stocks. Mm -hmm. And if tilt it a bit? Ah, there there? Uh, are, are you okay to, with that? To the gentleman there. Oh, <laughs> yes. that one is okay. Uh -huh. So if you cannot get it in, in, in the bookshops because the, it, it, it is a very new title, mm -hmm. okay. uh, then I can, if you allow me, probably just uh, give a number that sure. somebody can, can, can call sure. and then we can uh, discuss on how uh, they can get the book. All right. Can I give the number? Yes, please. 0733 uh -huh. 643155. Mm -hmm. They'll get me. If they don't get me, somebody else will pick that uh, call mm -hmm. that will be able to uh, advise on how to get as many copies as, uh, as they want. Okay. Sure. Thank you so very much sure. for coming, Professor. Thank you for hosting I me. I really hope that we can have more interactions like this. Sure. When, wherever you are discussing all things mental health, please think of me. Yes. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you, Bureau, for staying with us this far. The show started at 7. will uh, go up all the way till 10 a.m. So you know what time it is. It's time for Uncle Sakwa or at Brian Sakwa 101 to come through with a conversation with the gentleman today on MCM. Don't go away.